Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by Sports Radio America. I'm your host, Baxter Colburn, joined by Simon Provan. On the line with us now for our women's soccer spotlight is Washington Spirit midfielder Christine Naren. She joins us on the phone from the great state of Washington. Welcome to the program. How are you, Christine? I'm good. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. So you guys are rolling through preseason right now, and things seem to be looking good. You are 2-0 and in the preseason. Uh, the Spirit, everybody looks to be doing pretty well, and... Uh, how are things looking on your end from uh, your perspective? Yeah, it's been a good uh, three weeks of preseason. I can't believe this is already our third week. Um, but the team's doing really well. We're just learning each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses and, you know, learning our style of play and the way uh, Jim wants to, you know, structure our new team. And, you know, uh, I'm excited to be on board. I'm excited for a new coach and for him to be, bring new things to the table. And, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm excited for the season to get started because, uh We've been kicking each other for the past three weeks, and I think it'll be fun to kick someone else. Absolutely. Yeah, you mean that in the nicest way possible, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. (laughs) Well, we actually had a chance to speak with Jim uh, a couple weeks ago on the program, and he was very complimentary about the team, and uh, everything was starting to just kind of come together at that point. You you ladies had just reported for camp at that point, so he, uh, I'm sure, has a a little bit different tune by this point. But uh, preseason, as we mentioned, going well for you guys. You're uh, 2-0 in preseason. You actually just took on your alma mater. Uh, just this last, a couple of days ago and uh, scored against them as well. Was that a little bittersweet to, pay, to play against Penn State like that? Yeah, it was a little bittersweet. I think, um, you know, it's always always hard to play against an old team, an old college of yours. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're just trying to get better each and every every game that we have. And, you know, we, we plan very tough opponents on our schedule with Penn State, UVA, um, and Duke, so I think those will be the best teams in in our area that can um, prepare us for this for this uh, season. So I think you know if we continue to play that we, the way we have been and the way I know we're capable of, I think you know we'll we'll get right into the season you know and hit the ground running. Talking with Washington Spirit midfielder Christine Naren here on Two Up Front. Now, Christine, you spent some time in the NWSL before the Washington Spirit with a team called the Seattle Reign. A few folks may have heard of them. They've got uh, some semi-notable players, if you if you uh, <laughs> catch the sarcasm there. But uh, talk a little bit about your experience with the Reign, uh, as they have kind of been a dominant team in the league since day one, really. Yeah. Um, you know, I got drafted from the Seattle Reign. Or, I'm sorry, from Penn State to the Seattle Rain, and um, I was fortunate enough to, you know, live out my childhood dream of becoming a professional soccer player. So, um, you know, to be drafted West Coast wasn't, you know, uh, in the plans, but, you know, Seattle was a great first home for me, a great first professional season for me, and I'm happy, you know, to say that I played for the Rain and played for Coach Harvey and, you know, with the likes of Meg Rapino, Jess Fishlock, um, Hope Solo, all of those players are just top-notch, so um, that was great to learn from them for one season. Um, but, you know, it was it was nice in the off-season to be traded back home and to be able to play in front of friends and family. Week in and week out is something, you know, it's very special to me and very important to me because, you know, family is a big part of, you know, my life. And, you know, to be able to represent them on the professional stage is, you know, something that I think doesn't happen very often, and I get to live out in my upcoming third year with the Spirit. So, um, you know, I never forget where, you know, Seattle picked me up and and gave me a shot for my first year. But um, Washington Spirit is home, and I'm excited to get started with them this season. Speaking of being at home, too, you've had the opportunity to go a little bit bit of abroad as well. You spent some time in the... uh out in Australia in the W League as well, playing for Melbourne Victory. Now, for those that don't know, there's two different teams in Melbourne as well. For the, us that don't know the difference between the two, Melbourne Victory and Melbourne City, can you explain the difference? Is it kind of like a Manchester United-Manchester City rivalry, or is it just two friendly clubs? Uh, that is exactly what it is. That's the best <laughs> way I think you can put it, um, because Man City in England actually owns uh, Melbourne City. Oh, so okay. I feel like that's the best way I've heard it described, and I think, you know, the easiest way to understand it. Um, and, you know, Victory has been around. I think it's one of the founding clubs um, in the W League in Australia. So they have a lot of history. I think they've won it once, uh, I want to say two years ago. Um, so they have the, the taste of the championship right in front of them. And, you know, what City did is they opened up a brand new team this year and just brought in a lot of the Matildas, a lot of great international players such as Kim Little, 
Jen Beattie and yep. Jeff Um So, you know, if you bring in those type of players along with the Matildas, I think it just was the perfect recipe for success. And, you know, I went to a lot of their games, and it was great to see another women's team in the same city and to support them, you know, regardless of it being a different team, but to be able to support girls that I play with at the Seattle Reign and, you know, any way I can help, uh, you know, push women's soccer, I'm going to do it. So um, just to be able to watch them play in, in the same city was something unique, and I think it doesn't happen very often. So um, there's always, always, always going to be a – a little bit of a chip on our shoulder when mm-hmm. uh, we play City or City plays us. Um, like I said, it's the, the like you said, it's the Manchester United Man City rivalry. It's everyone has that that game marked on their calendar, and you know they're counting down the days already. So um, you know I've I've been fortunate enough to represent the victory for the past two years, um, and I hope to be back this season. So um, I'm looking forward to you know having that game on my calendar and circling it red. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, Hopefully, hopefully it'll come out a little bit different this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that was the the next thing I was going to kind of ask you, too. Between the that derby that you've had a chance to play in as well, but also just playing in the NWSL and in the W League in Australia, what are some of the differences that you've noticed? Because I feel like both leagues are obviously incredibly talented with the ladies that are in there, but something maybe has to stick out between each league that it's like, you know, this league doesn't have this or something of that nature. Is there any really defined differences, or are they pretty similar? Um, they're, they're very similar. Um, you know, the players want to, want to play and, you know, they want to put their stamp on the game. But I think the biggest difference is the style of play between the American League and the Australian League. I Mm. think, you know, um, the American League has been around for, I think, three, three rounds of different, different leagues. So, um, what you can expect in the American League, it's going to be fast. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be strong. At the same time, they're going to want to possess the ball and, and keep it. Um, and I think that Australia, the Australian League has shown spurts of, you know, keeping the ball and everything like that. But I think as a W League, I think it still has, you know, room to grow, as every league does, um, to continue to attract big-name players. Such yes, as, yep. Um, all the Matildas, all, I mean, all, every American wants to go play in the Australian League in the off season. Um, so for them to continue to push and continue to develop as a as a country of, of soccer, I think um, the possibilities are endless. And for the Matildas to be named, I think a top five team in the in the world, and mm. it's just going to benefit everyone involved. And, that is, you know, yeah. I think that's to be a part and important to be a part of and exciting to be a part of. So um, I'm more than happy to help build both leagues in any way I can and you know, hopefully be back next season, as I said. Well, that's very commendable of you. Now, changing gears now for a moment um, from the club level to the national level, you've only appeared for the senior women's national team twice for the United States, but uh, you did score a goal uh, against Canada, but it's been seven years since you scored that goal. Uh, <laughs> not, to, not to rub salt in the wound, but uh, why, haven't, why, why haven't we seen you in the, on the national team more recently, just due to the new influx of young players? Not that you're that old to begin with, but uh, what's, uh, <laughs> yeah. what's been going on with that? Um, you know, I think that the, the pool of players is just getting bigger and bigger as this week goes on. Um, you know, Jill has done a great job of bringing in uh, new players and giving the players a chance. I actually um, had to miss the first uh, Melbourne victory, Melbourne uh, City game due to being called into national team camp uh, with a full team this past, I think it was uh, October. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so it's kind of bittersweet of missing the the first derby game versus, you know, going to a camp with the U.S. Women's National Team is ranked number one in the world. So uh, I couldn't complain too much. Absolutely but, you not. Know, <laughs> to be able to... You know, even even be on the same field as those of those women um, for a week was was something that I've learned tremendous amounts about myself as a player and you know as a person. So um, I'm looking to hopefully get called in again. I think that's always the goal of Absolutely. professional athletes is to you know always push for that next level. And you know, I think um, you never know. I mean, the Olympics are coming up. You know, the teams, there's some older players on the team, so you never know. You know, my, my job right now is to just 
continue to keep my head down, work hard with the spirit, and if that gives me a call up, you know, that's great. But I'm going to continue to work hard for my team right now and my club, and you know, try to try to be the best for my team. So I think that's my first goal right in front of me, but the national team and pushing for that, it will always be in the back of my mind. Absolutely, and I'm sure that's something Coach Jim loves to hear too, knowing that uh, one of his most talented midfielders is going to continue to do everything she can to uh, make the team great. Now, I'm curious from a perspective that uh, you know, you've spent some time with the, you've been in the U.S. national team system for a long, long time, even back to when you were the young age of nine. But one thing I've always wondered, uh, on the men's side, we always hear, you know, USA, Mexico, the huge, you know, big rivalry. Who is the, the clear defined rival for the women's national team? Is it Canada? Is it Mexico? Is it a team like Germany that we've seen so many times? Do you, do you happen to have any insight into that at all? Um, I think in, in CONCACAF, uh, I would definitely say it's Canada. Um, I think, you know, in, you know, Europe, you, you have like your pick really, is it France, is it Germany, is it, you know, Sweden at times, or, you know, in the oceanic region, mm-hmm. is it Australia now, is it Japan, I mean, take your pick, I think that's what's so great about women's soccer is that every time a team sees the U.S. on their schedule, they have the best game of, of their history. Yeah. And I think, you know, for the U.S. to have the, tar- the, the, the target on their back, um, it's just going to be beneficial for everyone involved. And, you know, I would, I would love to see the U.S. play against every country and, you know, really define who the rivalry is. But, you know, the U.S. is going to bring it game in and game out. I think it's just, you know, what team is going to be able to capitalize on the U.S. on that day. And, you know, at times I thought, you know, Australia was a very good team. In this past World Cup, I thought, you know, Germany showed moments of brilliance, so did France. Uh, but I think it'll take a, a full team effort and a very good game from the opposition to take down the U.S. But, you know, they're not bulletproof. They're, they're you know, they're human too. So I think that whoever the U.S. plays, they're gonna, you know you're going to get a good game. And it's so exciting to watch the U.S. women fly. Absolutely, yeah. They're a tremendous team to watch and certainly thing that has really inspired the next generation of uh, women's soccer players. All right, well, before we let you go, Christine, uh, opening day just a couple weeks away for you ladies. Uh, you take on the Boston Breakers at home, and then you go on the road for two games, and then you go take on some teams like Portland and Houston. Uh, aside from opening day, I'm sure you where all the jitters can finally be getting out, and you can finally uh, tackle and hit a few people from the other team instead of your teammates. Uh, is there a couple of games on the schedule this season where you just have them circled, kind of like that, that derby that you were talking about with Melbourne? Uh, yeah, um, to be honest, every team that we play against, we always get a good game. I think, you know, there's only 10 teams in this league so far. Um, but, you know, you're always going to want to play against the best teams and see how you get, see how, what result you get to uh, really compare yourself to, you know, the best in the world. So I think the first uh, opening weekend is definitely circled. We want to, you know, impress our fans. We want to sell out the uh, soccer flex we want to put on a show for whoever comes and watches us play I think um, when we play Portland against Mark that's going to be an emotional game you know Mark did such a great job for us at DC but you know he moved on and you know we're excited to have Jim and I think Jim's excited to play against anyone like I said and kick somebody else besides ourselves Um, and another one we always want to play Seattle I think you know, we've, we've gone to the playoffs two years in a row and unfortunately didn't get the result. But, you know, we, they've proven to be one of, the, one of the best teams in the league and one of the best teams in the world. So you always want to uh, play against them and see if you can get three points out of the match. And, you know, if you don't, you know, you can always go back to the drawing board and say, how can we get better? And I think Jim does such a great job with that, of always going back to say, what can we control? What can we do better? And that's exactly the type of program that I want to be a part of. That's fantastic. Well, Christine, we really appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your busy schedule. The Washington Spirit Open Day against the Boston Breakers at home April 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Washington Spirit Boston Breakers. Go check it out if you are in the area. If not, definitely find a streaming channel or a social media platform to follow the game as well. Christine Naren, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got more here on Two Up Front. Stay with us and don't go anywhere.